Did he go in the rain? Mommy! Mommy! Where's my pet? <gasps> Kitty's outside getting wet. When water heats up, it turns into warm, wet air called vapor. Vapor rises into the sky where it becomes cold and turns into a cloud. The cloud becomes bigger until it is so heavy that parts of it fall to the ground. What falls? Raindrops. Kitty will find a place that's dry. Let's look for Kitty. Want to try? Do cats like rain? No. Water makes a cat's fur feel very heavy. Cat's ears cannot keep water out, and they don't like the way it smells. For Kitty, it's rain, rain, Go, Go away! away. <laughs> Raindrops are falling on Mama Duck. She likes the wet and mushy muck. Do ducks like rain? When ducks comb their feathers with their bills, they leave a layer of oil on top. The oil makes water slide off. It keeps the feathers that are closest to the duck's body dry and warm. In a lake or in the rain, ducks are waterproof. Rain won't scare a squirrel away. He stays busy on a rainy day. Do squirrels like rain? If it is not raining too hard, a squirrel will curl its tail over its head to make a built-in umbrella. In heavy rains, squirrels stay in their nests to keep dry. Brown beetle's shell is shiny and hard. He doesn't mind a rainy yard. Do beetles like rain? A beetle has a hard, shell-like covering that prevents it from getting soaked. Worms are squirmy on wet ground. They squirm and wiggle all around. Do worms like rain? Yes. Earthworms mostly live and travel underground because they need moisture all the time. After it rains, you will see worms because it is wet enough for them. They can wriggle along much faster above ground. Under leaves to butterflies rest. Keeping wings dry is what's best. Do butterflies like rain? Rain makes butterflies too cold to fly. They hide out in protected spots, called roosts, until the storm passes. When the sun comes out, so do the butterflies. Bird peeks out from a hole in a tree. He says, look, no rain on me. Do birds like rain? Some do, some don't. 
Most small birds tuck themselves away in nests or the inner branches of a tree or bush or under anything that will keep the rain off. After a rainstorm passes, you can go outside and listen for all the birdie chirps. Clouds are gone. The sun is high. Here's my kitty. Warm and dry. <laughs> Did Kitty go? Where does Kitty go in the rain? flowers grow. Part 1 Rabbit asks Duck and Frog, Do you know why flowers grow? I don't know, says Duck. Let's ask Piggy, says Frog. Piggy, why do flowers grow? asks Frog. Oh, I don't know, says Piggy. Mm, let's ask Horse, says Frog. Horse, why do flowers grow? asks Frog. I don't know, says Horse. Let's ask Sheep, says Frog. Frog, horse, rabbit, duck, and piggy. Ask sheep why flowers grow. Why do flowers grow? But sheep does not know either. Sheep says, <laughs> Mole will know. Everyone asks. Mole looks at the flowers. They look good to him. Very good. Chomp, chomp. Mm. Mole says, Flowers grow for me to eat. Part two. Frog and Duck are not happy with Mole's answer. 
They have a picnic with bee and butterfly. Duck asks, why do flowers grow? Butterfly says, I know why flowers grow. They grow so I can have sweet nectar to drink. <laughs> Bee has a different idea. I know why flowers grow. They grow so I can collect pollen. A girl comes to the picnic. Frog and duck ask her. Why do flowers grow? The girl answers. Flowers grow to make picnics beautiful. <laughs> the end. The bee box that Jack built. This is the bee box made of painted wood that stands in the shade of the yard. are the honeybees that live in the special box that stands in the yard. These are the flowers that feed the honeybees that fly in and out of the hive in a box. This is the sweet nectar that feeds the queen and the other bees that live in the bee box that stands in the yard. This is the golden honey made by the thousands of busy bees that work inside the dark shelter that stands in the yard. And this is Jack, the daddy, who keeps bees as a hobby, gathering honey from the bee box that stands in the yard. This is the honey pot filled with fresh honey produced by the worker bees that live in the hive that stands in the yard. And this is the mommy who drinks tea with honey while her children snack on bread and sweet gooey honey. This is the honeycomb made by the worker bees that is collected from the hive that stands in the yard. And this is Jack, 
the daddy who likes to eat raw honey and comb with slices of tart green apple. Delicious. This is the beeswax made into candles that are scented with honey that is collected from the hive that stands in the yard. And this is the mommy who lights the candles, then says a prayer of thanks. This is the cough syrup made with golden honey that comes from the hive in a box that stands in the yard. And this is Jack, the daddy, who spoons the medicine so his child will sleep better. This is the yogurt mixed with honey that comes from the bee box that stands in the yard. And this is the grandma who offers her grandchildren sweet honey yogurt for breakfast. Here is the whole family, thankful to the bees for the candles, for the golden honey, for the cough syrup, for the beeswax, and for pollinating the flowers. Thank you, honey bees. Flower by Joseph Kiefler. It was morning, and the big trucks were ready to work. Let's hoist, said Crane. Let's push, said Dozer. Let's dig, said Digger. Together, they built tall buildings for working. They built roads for driving and bridges for crossing. They built and built until the loud whistle blew. I'm beat, said Crane. Me too, said Dozer. The other big trucks took a break, but Digger did not. He had found something in the rubble. Hmm. Hello there, he said. The flower was tiny, but it was beautiful.
every day while the other big trucks built. Digger visited the flower. He watered it when its leaves looked dry. Drink up. He shielded it on windy days. Mm. And just before he switched off for the night, Digger sang the flower a bedtime song. The flower grew, but the city grew too. Soon, every space had been filled. Every space but one. We need to put a building here, said Crane. Dozer started his engine. Before Digger could stop him, uh, uh, Dozer blew a big puff of smoke. And cut the flower down. Then the other big trucks went back to work. Oh, but Digger did not. <sighs> when the smoke cleared, Digger saw something in the rubble. Mm. 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 Little seeds, he said. He scooped them up and drove. Mm, mm, mm. He drove past the tall buildings, past the farthest house on the farthest street. He drove to a place no big truck had ever been. <laughs> there, Digger stopped. He dug uh, 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 and scooped. <laughs> seeds into the warm earth. Every day, Digger cared for the seeds. He watered them when their leaves looked dry. He shielded them on windy days. And just before he switched off for the night, Digger sang the flowers a bedtime song. <laughs> Thank you.
The Boy Who Grew a Forest. The True Story of Jadav Paying. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is now. Proverb. In India, on a large river island, among farms and families, hard at work, there lived a boy who loved trees. Trees meant shade, food, and shelter for many. But each rainy season, floodwaters swallowed more and more of the beautiful tree-covered land. The boy's precious island was shrinking, eroding away with the rushing river, leaving empty sandbars behind. The boy witnessed animals stranded on those sandbars, their homes destroyed. He feared that if animals withered without trees, people would too. The boy shared his fears with the village. The elders explained that the only way to help animals was to create new homes for them. They gifted the boy with 20 bamboo saplings. Alone, he canoed down the muddy river. He wished he could cover all the land with trees. But a large sandbar nearby was a place to start. The land was too barren for animals, the shores too sandy for leafy trees. Would bamboo grow? The boy hoped. Determined, he began to plant. One shaft, two, then three. Every day, he watered the saplings by hand, sweat trickling down his face and chest. He built a watering system to help and lugged heavy buckets from the river. His arms grew tired, his back sore. Still, each day he tended to the plants and, over time, the bamboo patch grew into a healthy thicket. The boy was proud of his work, but he worried it wouldn't be enough. To stop the swelling river or to provide shelter for animals. If he wanted more plants to grow, he would have to create a richer soil. The boy carried cow dung, earthworms, termites, and angry red ants that bit him on the journey to the new home. He brought seeds from neighboring villages over trails, through brush, down the river. Each day, he planted.
As years passed and the boy grew, so did a forest. Ten acres, twenty acres, then forty. Wildlife returned for the first time in many years. Buffalo, one-horned rhinos and snakes, gibbons, migratory birds and elephants. The man's forest teemed with life and diversity. Not everyone was happy. Fear swept over the villages when tigers arrived. So the man planted more grasses to attract small animals that would keep the tigers happy in the forest. Elephants wandered into neighboring farms to feast on the crops. So the man planted more fruiting trees to help feed the hungry elephants. Some wanted to harvest the forest to build homes. But the man was there to plant anew. Others tried to hunt the animals for their horns and fur. But the man was there to protect. Few thought the forest would last, but the man believed in its strength. Now in India, on a large river island, among wildlife and trees as tall as buildings. There lives a man who has planted a forest. The forest is called Molai, after a man named Jadav Molai Paying, who never stopped planting and pruning and protecting. Only by growing plants, the earth will survive. Jadav Paying. Plant a Kiss, written by Amy Krauss Rosenthal, illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds. It goes like this. Little Miss. Planted a kiss. Planted a kiss? Planted a kiss. Sunshine. Water. Repeat. Wait and <sighs> wait. <sighs> Getting late.
doubt. Pout. Sprout. <laughs> Shout! Shout! Gather about. Wow. How? What now? Stare and stare. I'll share, she declared. Don't you dare! It's far too rare. I it'll go bare. She didn't care. From there, everywhere. To and fro. High. And low. Rain. Or snow. With a bow. Alas, time to go. So she returned. There she learned. From one little kiss. <gasps> Endless bliss. dog, a pop-up Easter egg hunt. Count the eggs inside. It's Easter on the farm. And once again, eggs have been hidden. And not by a hen. must all get up at dawn to join the search before the eggs are gone. The cows and pigs join the hunt from the biggest bull to the littlest runt. Each with a basket Looking for clues. So many eggs. Not a second to lose. Every success is met with delight. A neigh from the horse means an egg is in sight. All the animals think it's funny. That Kirby thinks he's the Easter Bunny. The eggs are all found, but have no fear. Kirby the Easter Dog will be back next year. Happy Easter! Thirty-seven found! Uh, 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 uh. 
shrub. Look what I found! She cradled it gently and joined the others. Poodle paddled into the pond and nudged one off a lily pad. Yellow Lab stood, her paws high on a tree trunk. Here's another! She woofed, wagging her tail. Easter Bunny thanked his friends, but he frowned at his broken basket. How will I carry the eggs? He wondered. We'll carry them for you, the puppies barked. <laughs> Easter Bunny smiled. Then he led the way, cheering. Hooray for the Easter Puppy Parade! Happy, happy Easter! planets have been up to lately. <gasps> I should go visit them. Hi, Mercury. Oh, hey, Earth. Long time no see. I was about to go on a run. Want to race around the sun? <laughs> Let's go! Gotta go fast! Gotta go fast! 
Doctor! I got this! Wow, you're fast. You ran four laps in the time I did one. Thanks. I'm little, but I'm the speediest planet in the whole solar system. <laughs> Mercury zooms around the sun every 88 days. Hi, Earth. Do you mind if I borrow your moon to shoot hoops? I don't have one. No problem, Venus. I'll come play with you. <laughs> Look out! Here I come! <laughs> All right! She shoots, she scores! Whoa, swoosh! <laughs> good game, good game. Ooh, you didn't miss a shot. <laughs> You're on fire, Venus. Well, I am the hottest planet in the solar system. <laughs> the surface temperature of Venus can reach 880 degrees Fahrenheit. <gasps> oh, how's it going, Mars? Dude! <laughs> Come surf the asteroid belt with me. Whoa, all that surfing turned up some of your rusty red dust. Right, yes! Hey, that's why they call me the Red Planet. I'm the reddest and raddest around, bro Chacho. <laughs> Mars gets its color from an abundance of iron oxide, commonly known as rust. What's up, big guy? Not too much. Um, I did pick up a new hobby. Nice. Hmm, uh, basketball? Weightlifting? <laughs> no. Jupiter dance. <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh -huh. I didn't know the biggest planet in the solar system was so graceful. <laughs> Thanks. I may be large, but I'm light on my feet. <laughs> Jupiter is mainly made up of gases, such as hydrogen and helium. Uh, hi, Saturn. Um, your rings look extra sparkly today. Y'all are too sweet. <laughs> I added some shiny ice chunks to the rocky bits in space dust. Come hula hoop with me. Play! Woo! <laughs> She's the most amazing planet in the universe. Galileo first spotted Saturn's rings in 1610. <laughs> What the? Your hula hooping skills are electrifying. Are you trying to look cooler than me? N no way, Uranus. Everyone knows you're the coolest planet around. That's a fact. 
Sorry for the frosty greeting, kid. Uranus has the coldest recorded temperature of any planet at negative 371 degrees Fahrenheit. What are you doing way out here, Neptune? I like how quiet and beautiful it is. Ooh, look how those comets light up the sky. Beyond Neptune, the Kuiper Belt is a source of comets. It's the best view in the solar system. Ooh. <gasps> 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 wow, the other planets are so special. I'm not the fastest, the biggest, or the coolest. <laughs> I must be the most boring planet in the solar system. We have something for you, Tiny Blue Marble. For me? Surprise! <laughs> Your air is the freshest. Me? You're covered in flowing water. Yeah? And most importantly... Hmm? You're full of life! in the whole solar system. The end. Book. The Easter Bunny is hopping away. He must have forgotten it's Easter Day. Magical places where unicorns hide. One tosses her mane with a nod of her head. I'll deliver the eggs on this Easter instead. She mixes bright colors and knows what to do. With her horn, she draws stripes and makes polka dots, too. In a ribbon lace basket, she loads up her eggs. And 
prances off quickly on high-stepping legs. She visits the burrows and bushes and lakes. Gently placing an egg at each stop that she makes. The basket is empty. The job at an end. Her magic has found every animal friend. as they open their eyes. It's a unicorn Easter. A joyful surprise. Happy Easter! trees. How trees sustain our planet. First, a tree is food. Would life be satisfying without trees? It would not. Sweet sap to gather. Pecans to pick. Nuts, berries, bark. To crunch, munch, and lick. Leaves for a koala. Bamboo shoots for a bear. A giraffe stretches up for an acacia tree's fair. Apples and syrup for you. Cherries and chocolate for me. People and animals are fed tree by tree. Second, a tree is comfort. Would life be good without trees? It would not. What gives you a seat? A floor for your feet. A place you can sit with your family to eat. What gives you a sofa? Shh. Some comfy chairs. A way to the attic with pull-down stairs. A baby's cradle. A double-decker bed. A dining table with a mom at the head. Places to sit. Places to slumber. A tree is lumber. Third, a tree is music. Would life be melodious without trees? It would not.
pianos and bongos. A violin and bow. The moan of a cello. Lonesome and low. The pom-pom of a drum. A guitar's twangy strum. Tree wood makes music zing, ping, and hum. Fourth, a tree is art. Would life be beautiful without trees? It would not. Paper for drawing. Recipes for cooks. Signs, magazines, glorious books. With brushes and paint. Or drawn by yourself. A creation on paper displayed on a shelf. Each artist is different, but all can agree a tree inspires creativity. Fifth, a tree is recreation. Would life be fun without trees? It would not. Paper kites swirling. Boats floating by. Tall trees reaching up help us see sky. Oars and paddles. Benches with slats. Ski boards, balance beams, and long wooden bats. Tree wood shapes toys for girls and for boys. Sixth, a tree is home. Would life be comfy without trees? It would not. Sturdy branches to swing from. Hang on or rest. A perfect forked branch holds a knee a little nest. Habitat for a frog. A burrow in roots. This big hole is mine, say an owl's loud hoots. Protection and shelter. Under a wide, leafy dome. A place to sleep. A tree is a home. Seven. A tree is life. Would life be possible without trees? It would not. Storms, fires.
fires, floods, all kinds of construction. Trees need protection from man-made destruction. No place for a bird, no shade, and no green. Trees make the earth rich and keep our air clean. Explore a cool forest with its pine-scented breeze. Just remember, forever, be thankful for trees. of the river one warm spring day. A new life began, and her name was May. Hmm. Mama held May in a warm, tender hug, then said goodbye to her sweet baby bug. You have your whole life, a day, perhaps more. Don't waste it, May. Use your wings and explore. Her delicate wings were feathery light. With a flit and a flutter, May took off in flight. There was so much to see and so much to know, but a dangerous thing was lurking below. It was big. It was hungry. It needed to eat. A newly hatched mayfly would make a great treat. Disguising its dark and deceitful sneer, it pleasantly said, Come closer, my dear. I have something here that you really must see. But you're too far away. Come closer to me. A voice inside her warned, May, don't go. But May didn't listen and swooped down too low. It sprang from the water, and that's when May saw two rows of sharp teeth and a menacing jaw. It snapped its mouth tight to gobble up May. But she ducked and she darted and somehow got away. May found safety in the hollow of a tree. She covered her eyes and tried not to breathe. Her body shuddered at the thought of trout. I'll stay here forever. I'm not coming out. But when her heart slowed, May heard a sweet sound. Peeking out slowly, she looked all around. A robin nearby gave a cheerful tweet, then flew to her babies with something to eat.
the mist on the river was a fine pink cloak. A bullfrog bellowed his morning croak. May noticed the beauty of a web in the sun, the glittering silk the spider had spun. Mama was right. There's so much to see. I can't live my life inside this tree. So May launched herself from the dark, hollow place. A greeting from the sun put a smile on her face. Mm. May followed the river along as it flowed. She saw cattails swaying and a stubby toad. And bounding along without a care, Two cubs following Mama Bear. There were bluebells in clusters offering up for Hummingbird a cool drink from their cups. A newborn fawn on wobbly knees. And then in a clearing, May could see. A singing, dancing jamboree. A wild mayfly jubilee. Joining in, May danced with glee. The day rambled on and shadows grew long. Nature was singing its afternoon song. May floated along on a warm, gentle breeze, when faintly she heard a desperate plea. With shaky wings, she followed the sound, but May stopped cold at what she found. Snagged in a mess, his body still, the only movement from his gill. May inched closer, slow, unsure. Afraid again, he'd lunge at her. The trout was weak, no flip or flail. Tangled line had caught his tail. May's eyes lingered on Trout's jaw. But this time, there was more she saw. The snag had taken all Trout's fight, yet his colors shimmered in the light. Rainbow stripes in every hue. Silver, pink, and shades of blue. May saw a scar where once he'd fought to keep himself from being caught. And when her gaze met Trout's scared eyes, we're not so different, May then realized. The fear she had felt, May now forgot, and she quickly started on the knot. The knot so tight. Her progress slow. But then, at last, the line let go. The river carried Trout away. May wondered, will he be okay? 
The silence was broken with a startling splash. Scanning the river, May saw a flash. Breaking the surface and catching the light, Trout flipped his tail and waved good night. And then an echo on the wind that blew. Two simple, precious words. Thank you. Her spirits matching the river's glow, May settled in for the nighttime show. Crickets and bullfrogs played their sweet tune while fireflies twinkled beneath the full moon. The stars came out early for sweet little May. She counted each one, then called it a day. The End. <laughs> Flora, a botanical pop-up book. flower begins as a bud. Their blooms produce seeds which root into sprouts. Spring brings rain and warmer weather, which encourages plants to produce flowers. While all flowers share the same humble beginnings, stunning range of brilliant hues and exceptional shapes. Annual plants have bright, showy blossoms that last a single season. Perennial plants survive many years and tend to have smaller flowers. Many peony and poppy flowers open in sunlight, closing at night and on cloudy days. Jasmine flowers release their fragrance after the sun sets to attract nighttime pollinators. Flowers have special colors and scents to attract bees for pollination. Bees turn nectar into honey to feed the colony. Many species of bees are endangered due to climate change, habitat loss, disease, and pesticides. Sweet floral nectar feeds tiny animals and insects. In return, they share their dusty gifts of pollen with other plants. Hummingbirds can drink up to two times their body weight in nectar a day. When butterflies land on flowers, pollen is transferred to and from their legs. More than 300 species of fruit depend on bats for pollination. Flowers produce fruits and seeds after pollination.
Critters deposit fruit seeds in new areas through their droppings. Some seeds are airy enough to flit in the wind. Others are carefully armored for years. Every fruit starts as a flower, but not every flower produces fruit. While some flowers grow on land, others flourish in water. Aquatic plants nurture wildlife by filtering water, creating oxygen, and providing shelter. Plants that grow in water often have flexible stems that either float freely or reach into the soil below. Life is enriched by flowers in many ways. With purpose and beauty, they help nature survive and thrive. Willa and the Wind. Willa was a whimsical girl, and Willa loved the wind. She longed to be like the leaves that fluttered by her window and floated through her long locks of hair. She loved the way they danced in the air like a beautiful ballet, and the sound of the loud whoosh from their perfectly harmonized whirls. But Willa's favorite thing about the leaves was the way they flew freely through the air wherever the wind wanted to take them. Willa wanted to be just like the leaves in the wind. Willa wanted to fly. First, she tied her favorite superhero cape around her neck, hiked to the top of a humongous grassy hill, and sprinted as fast as she could down the steep slope. But as quickly as she ran, her feet never left the ground. Next, she sat on a swing and pumped her legs so hard she almost flipped over the top of the swing set. Right when she was at the highest point, she leapt into the breeze. But the breeze didn't catch her and she hit the sand with a thud. Willa stayed hopeful because she saved her best idea for last. She collected every scrap of paper she could find and crafted a giant paper airplane. She glued and taped all of the edges together, creating the world's coziest cockpit. It was so stable, she just knew it would take her frolicking through the air. With her goggles on, ready for takeoff, she leapt, she jumped, but her airplane just wouldn't budge. Defeated, she came inside, ready to give up. All of her plans failed, and she was filled with disappointment. Her dad had one more idea. Come with me, he said. He took her outside and told her to climb up onto his shoulders. Stand up, he said. I'll hold your ankles. Bravely, Willa put her feet on her dad's shoulders, straightened her legs, and stretched her arms out to the side like big, beautiful wings. A gargantuan gust of wind came whipping through the air, and she finally felt like she was flying. Suddenly, the wind grew so powerful that Willa lost her balance. From high up in the air, she stumbled and came falling down fast. Closing her eyes, she waited to feel her body hit the ground. But instead, she landed softly in her dad's strong arms. She wrapped her hands around his neck and didn't let go. The 
protection of her dad's embrace made her feel even more free than the leaves. I guess I'm not like the wind, she said, but that's okay. The wind is inside of you, Willis' dad said to her. You are free like the leaves and dance more beautifully than they ever will. The wind in your heart will take you anywhere in the world you want to go. You just need to be brave enough to jump. If you don't have books, what are you waiting for? It's a kid-safe, ad-free library full of storybooks brought to life. Ask your grown-up and start exploring more fun stories like these. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Vox app for free today.